Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Francesco, I'm one of the founders of Superfluid, and I'm here to talk to you a bit about an outrageous idea, uh, like uh, Maddie was talking about. What we're doing at Superfluid is fairly strange, and when I presented it uh, to Pete, he asked me to you know, come and talk about it, but also not to make it a sales pitch. So I thought I'd take a bit of a longer winded approach and go a bit more on the why rather than the what and explain to you why we're doing what we're doing. And I'll do that uh, by talking about Dubai. So I'm sure you all know about Dubai. A lot of people here probably know they don't have corporate tax. Uh, it's also a place where 30 years ago there was nothing, right? Maybe 40. There was nothing there. They didn't have anything. It was a desert, right? And now we've become used to the idea of Dubai being this spectacular city. Everything is at your fingertips, right? They have running water, running electricity, things we're used to as well. But uh, somehow it's captured the imagination of being this future city, right? And what's uh, characteristic of the future is that you never have to wait. Everything is immediately available, right? Everything is quick, everything is fast, everything is real time. We have technology that enables us to have synchronous calls with people on the other side of the world feeling like we're in the same room. We never have to wait. We're really used to this continuous flow of information, of experiences, of services, and this has just become something we're used to. But we've come a long way, right? It wasn't like this before. We had to carry back buckets of water. We had to send snail mail that would take days to arrive. Uh, we had to you know, make uh, calls that would need to be connected by an operator. We've come a long way with the way we uh, send information, data, the way we, we transfer anything, right? Nowadays, we're used to flowing data, flowing, um, flowing everything. But um, there's still work to do, right? Not everything works like this. Uh, there's still a lot of things we have to do. We have to bring along uh, a lot of the rest of the world. And uh, interestingly, there are a lot of things that still don't work like this. We're used to the internet, right? Like we're the internet generation. If you speak to the guys at Z Prime, they'll tell you they live on Twitter, right? We're used to real time uh, feedback loops on everything we do. But I'll give you an example of something that is a bit different. So I'm sure you, you've all heard of this building, the Burj Khalifa, tallest building in the world, 80, 848 meters tall, right? That's the apex of uh, engineering tallest building in the world. It's amazing, right? You can get, have a great experience there. Everything is real time. You never have to wait. You get all these uh, amazing experiences you've become used to. Again, remember, 30 years ago, there was nothing there. But one thing that they don't have in the Burj Khalifa is sewage. They don't have sewage. Every day, there's trucks and trucks that have to go there and manually uh, discharge from the building. Right? And this, if you think about it, is in stark contrast to everything you see in the front. Right? It's this amazing place, but the infrastructure isn't there. Right? And this is just stands to, to tell you that you can have an amazing system. We can be at the apex of Western civilization and still have infrastructure which is lacking and really not where it should be. Right? And this is ridiculous, right? If you go online, you'll find a bunch of videos of YouTubers just making fun of Dubai because they don't have sewage, right? They're working on it, you know, the, the boomers are at work uh, trying to fix the sewage problem in Dubai, but uh, it's not the only thing that we've left hanging. It's not the only piece of core infrastructure that we haven't improved in a long time. And the banks work the same. If you think about it, every day, transactions are batched, slowly moving from one intermediary to another. In the front, it works great, right? Contactless card, go buy a pint, get it immediately, right? You go online, you give your credit card number, you subscribe to Netflix, it works. But when does the merchant get paid? What's happening in the back, right? How fast are, can transactions move? How soon can people get paid? Why are we used to extremely fast feedback loops on everything? We're used to continuous flows of information, we're used to synchronous communications, but our money moves so slowly. Why is that, right? And we have the tools to build um, new systems, but we also have to change our behavior. We've become so complacent with our money working so badly that it's just how it is, right? You work a full month, you get paid at the end of the month, right? The bank could even do it faster, but we don't want to adapt. We don't want to move faster, right? So there's a lot that we have to do, but technology shapes behavior. 
right? Technology shapes institutions. Everything we do is built around what we can do because of technology. And as we build new technology, you know, we're building uh, the financial rails of the future, we should adapt and improve our behavior as well. We should move as fast as the internet. And uh, that's what we're doing at Superfluid. So the internet is what uh, will move information at incredible speeds. The blockchain can do the same thing. Services on the internet flow in real time. Payments still don't, but that's something uh, that we're working on at Superfluid. We're building uh, next generation money, right? As, uh, as Mattia was saying, we are building new money. Well, let's make it more expressive. Let's make that money so that it can flow in real time and it can basically bring us that same experience that we're so used to with everything else that we experience every day. So we do this through money streaming. Money streaming is uh, this concept where instead of transferring funds in batches, right, instead of having those trucks come in once a day, what you do is you build a pipe. Money flows in real time every second from one account to another. And it does this without any friction, without any uh, need for you know, millions of transactions. It's simply built into the money itself and with incredible user experience. Now, what do you get with this? You get no delays, right? You never have to wait. The trucks don't break down. You don't have to, you don't have transactions blocked in the banking system. You don't have letters lost in the postal system, right? Money's flowing every second. I can just open my website and see that my salary is ticking in. It's coming, it's arriving every second that I work. You have no unpayment risk because as soon as that pipe is closed, you know that you're not getting paid anymore. You can stop working, right? At the moment, you'll work a month and then at the end of the month, find out that your employer won't pay you, right? So these are some of the advantages of making money flow faster. And we believe that by doing it through the blockchain without intermediaries, we don't need to sacrifice uh, the self-sovereignty and the uh, independence of our users, which is so important in crypto, but at the same time, provide them with an experience which is not only on par with traditional uh, subscription services, but even better. So what can you do with, uh, with money streams? Well, Recurring payments, right? They're basically recurring payments. Instead of recurring once a month, they're recurring every second. And that's, again, strictly better than making a payment once a month. What does this mean? Well, you can do subscriptions, right? Which is something we've never had in crypto. If you think about it, it's incredible. We're building new money. We know subscriptions are the way Web2 is basically monetized forever, and we don't have subscriptions in crypto, right? Well, with Superfluid, you can do that, and you can do that without requiring the user to use an intermediary without requiring the user to use a custodian, and at the same time, uh, allowing them to control everything from their account. We can do also salaries, which is our core focus at the moment, and uh, in the future, interest payments as well. So you can, you can try it out if you wanna see how this works. It's extremely simple. Uh, simpleness is very important for us because if you're building something that needs fundamental behavioral change, it has to be easy to use. If it's hard to use and you know, I have to learn a new behavior, it's never gonna happen. In our case, the behavior has to change, but the technology is really at your fingertips. Opening a stream of money is one transaction on chain. And what does this mean? Well, um, I'll jump straight to this. Well, things we have at the moment are streaming exchanges. Uh, we have uh, streaming interest coming in the pipeline. Other uh, incredible kind of ideas, uh, you know, extravagant, crazy ideas, like Matteo was saying, are uh, what our community is built on. But one thing that we're really seeing at the moment is, um, okay, well, this application is working very well. This uh, it allows you to invest every second. So using this application with one transaction, you open a stream to a super, uh, a super fluid smart contract, which effectively buys Bitcoin for you every second. You don't have to you know, open a website, you're sleeping and you're buying Bitcoin, right? And we believe these kinds of experiences where you have full automation, but at the same time doing it from a non-custodial wallet are something you know, very new and that will you know, bring about a lot of new opportunities in the future. Now, salaries are something we're very excited about uh, because I think they're, it's very easy for people to understand that it's better to get paid more often, right? And uh, when I talk to people about this, they're like, why would I want to get paid every second? Well, it's very simple. Would you want to be paid once a year, right? Would you want to be paid once every six months? No, right? Well, why did you settle on getting paid once a month? Like, why is 
30 days the magic number. It's not, right? You should go down to the smallest denominator, which is the second. You should get paid for every second you work because that's the only way that you can know that your employer stops paying you. It's the only way that you can know that it's always a fair deal. Now, when you get paid every second, uh, you can also spend the money every second. That's a great advantage, right? I was telling someone yesterday, well, sure, you get paid at the end of the month, but what if Bitcoin bit, uh, dips today, right? How are you gonna invest in Bitcoin? You're gonna invest in 30 days? Like, that's gonna be a completely different price, right? It's obvious to, to anyone who manages money that money today is better than money tomorrow. So you can immediately invest, you can uh, spend your money on rent, uh, you can buy Ether or Bitcoin in real time, and all of this is happening every second. So it's not a monthly transaction anymore, it's a second by second flow of money. This is what it looks like, the numbers are incredibly hard to read, uh, as we know people are, are very bad with small numbers, but this is what uh, a flow of money looks like, and this is uh, what's happening at the moment uh, with Superfluid. So, we're trying to build a world where uh, finance, finance and money uh, work with no friction, right? Uh, this is the core of technology is to make things frictionless, and this is what uh, Superfluid is about, bringing money into the 21st century, building money that doesn't have friction, that doesn't need batches, that doesn't need manual processes, but that can flow seamlessly on the Internet the same way everything else flows on the Internet. So, yeah. Thanks a lot uh, for listening, and I hope uh, next time we talk, uh, we'll all be receiving streaming salaries. Thanks, thanks very much, Brian. Again, does anybody have any questions on that? Oh, uh, right, okay, <laughs> hold on a second. Thank you so much, Francesco, wonderful presentation. We did speak, speak yesterday shortly about the, uh, uh, the oracles of, of data. So what you're providing are payment rails uh, where essentially you can pay someone for every second of work completed or supplier for every you know, small batch of product delivered. Uh, and on the other side, uh, as, as, a, as, a, as, the, as the one paying for the service or for, for the goods, uh, do you also anticipate the integration with uh, data oracles so that on the other side, the, the, the buyer would be sure that you know, service is being completed, that the value is accruing, that... Um, you know, that you know, something is actually happening so that there is a justification that I'm going to be paying someone for, for every second. I mean, I'm sure you have thought about it. We, we talked about it yesterday, yeah, but yeah. Uh, we never completed the story. It was well, a very nice scenery in the cave. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, when you build a protocol like what we're doing, we're really not trying to build a use case, right? We're not trying to build subscriptions. We're not trying to build uh, salaries. We're not trying to build... Uh, investment, the investment app I showed you is not built by us, it's built by a member of our community, right? We're trying to build a tribe. And what you're describing is effectively a use case. It's a very specific one where you have a delivery for a service. Now, if, uh, if I'm working for someone, right, uh, then the delivery of that service might be a bit more obvious if I'm going to the office every day. If you're talking about automated systems like, uh, you know, it could be APIs, right? Is the API still running? I can keep paying. I think ultimately it will depend very much on every specific use case to integrate uh, the specific oracles that enable that to be automated. But what you have with Superfluid is the more direct relation between the value that's provided and the payment being made, right? As I was saying at the moment, everything is batched in payments, so you don't pay for every unit of time that you're using a service. You pay for the contract once a month or once a year, right? But if that contract is breached, then you have to figure out how to handle the last part of the payment. Or maybe you paid and you know, they never supplied the, the data. Or maybe they supplied the data and you never paid. Now, by paying for every second of use, that risk disappears. You can effectively you know, directly tie the stream of money with the service. So I think uh, you know, integrating oracles will basically bring down your, your risk of paying for a service you don't actually use to a few seconds, which is you know, an incredible improvement over existing. Uh, so you don't necessarily mean that you get paid by second, but the, uh, the period of each payment depends on the, on the value of, of that is being created. So it needs to somehow measure the value that's being created. So not necessarily per second, but it might be per day, or it might be per week. What we are building is, is per second. Yeah. It is per second. Uh, because seconds are objective, right? Like, uh, it's, you can measure seconds, right? Me measuring work done is much harder. 
So we'll leave that to a second layer on top of superfluid. Uh, but we focus on things that you know, we can measure objectively and kind of sustainably. The blockchain is a big clock, right? It's a very big, very secure clock. And time is you know, a basic component of it. And that's basically how superfluid works, right? We, we just tie money to time. Um, but tying it to other variables, yeah, it, it's uh, much more complicated. OK, there were other hands. I was probably, uh, or might be a dumb question, but does a, do the tokens need to be in the wallet when you create the transaction? And if it does, what happens with the, or if it doesn't, what happens if the funds run out? Do you need to carry yeah, on topping a, it up? That's a good question. Yeah, so, I mean, you can't spend money you don't have, right? We're not providing credit. Uh, we're not, uh, you know, we're not printing money from thin air. We're not providing credit. So you can only spend money you have in your wallet. But uh, there's a very small capital requirement. Like, if you're paying somebody a salary for a full year, it doesn't mean you have to have a full year's worth of salary. The way the, the system's currently geared, you have to have four hours worth of that salary. So the capital efficiency is, is very high. Uh, what you can see here is that basically the money is netted, right? So the employee, when they start these streams, their, their wallet is empty. They don't have any money at all. But because they're receiving funds every second, they can spend those funds every second, right? Their wallet is actually empty, right? They're simply receiving and sending uh, funds that they, that they get paid in, right? And this is you know, how most businesses uh, with income and, and expenses work, right? Except at the moment, they do all of this processing at the end of the month. They'll wait for their bills to get paid, and then when their bills get paid, they'll make their own uh, payments, right? What you can do here is automate all of that so that as you get paid every second, you also make all your payments every second. And by doing this effectively, uh, you, have, you have to keep much uh, less liquidity in your account because, let, let's go back to a, consul a consultant, right? Imagine you have one big client that pays you at the end of the month. If their payment is delayed or if their payment never comes in, you have a full month's worth of bills that you have to pay anyway. In this case, you get paid every second. The moment they stop paying you, you know immediately. You can either interrupt your own downstream payments, or uh, in any case, you have a liquidity gap, which is much more small and manageable. So, so generally, liquidity-wise, I think making payments every second has uh, you know, clear advantages in capital efficiency, especially for small businesses that don't have uh, a lot of you know, liquidity or don't have such an easy access to credit. Thanks, Ryan. OK, there was a hand yeah, up back here. Right, one, one second. We've got probably time for two more questions, I think. So. Uh, I think I'm covering the same kind of conversation that's been had already, because you're talking about liquidity gap and you know, we're talking about cash flow. I, I love the idea, but I assume then that you're making something at the back end that will then remove the craziness and nonsense that is net 30 with clients or net 60. So if you have it back to back, then it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. But that's the, whole, that's the whole issue. I mean, as a business owner, I yeah. love nothing more than to adopt salary streaming, but I need to make sure that we're being paid as a business in the same way. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, that's why I said at the beginning, it's, it's not just a technical challenge, right? It, in fact, I'd say it's mostly a behavior uh, challenge. What, you know, most of crypto has been inventing new money. We're kind of inventing a new behavior for money, right? And new behaviors take a long time to, to take hold. Uh, you know, we need, we need very strong memes. Uh, probably the guys at Z Prime are better than us at that. But uh, I think over time, as more people adopt this, it will become more commonplace. In the meantime, what you can do is find credit providers who will help with that. And we're building some in our community uh, for DAOs, for example, who want to use salary streaming but not necessarily um, have the liquidity at the beginning of the month. But you know, if you're a good creditor, you can find someone to advance you the money to stream while at the same time having your bills come at the end of the month. But obviously, you know, it would be ideal if this is how it worked. There are companies that are you know, gearing up to start accepting subscription payments in streams and at the same time make salary payments in streams. And for them, the, you know, the capital efficiency that they can get is, is incredible. But it will only be those very crypto-native kind of avant-garde uh, businesses that do it first, right? It will, it will take a long time before we can get the whole world running on uh, streaming rails. 
Okay, we have a question from uh, Ben Lee, who's that rare beast of an accountant in crypto. <laughs> oh, I yeah, sorry to be the accountant. <laughs> the um, this is blowing my mind a little bit, and because of last night, my mind's working quite slowly, unfortunately. My question originally was sort of around timescales here because of sort of, you know, the mass adoption needed for this to work. And then obviously, because I'm a very boring tax person, it's then that sort of integration with government, you know, currently our salary system in the UK under PAYE, all that sort of stuff. I guess my question is sort of how do you see that working? Is that a barrier? And, and I guess in your head, what do you think the time scale here is in, in terms of that sort of adoption? Yeah, time scale is a tricky one, right? Um, adopted by who? Uh, like, I know it probably sounds crazy, but there's actually companies using it already. Like, I'm talking about it as if it was something in the future, but you know, some people are living in that future already. Right? We are paying some of our employees uh, in streams. There are some DAOs in the, in the space that are paying all of their employees in streams. You know, th this is coming. Right? And that's what technology does. Kind of you, you innovate, and then the institutions come and figure out how to deal with uh, what's now possible. Right? I think, uh, as you said, taxes, accountants, they're probably the reason we haven't innovated that much in payments. Right? The, these kinds of things tend to, to ossify um, the kind of institutional um, behaviors we have, right? All of most of taxing, most tax compliance is monthly, quarterly, or yearly, right? These are, are conventions we've kind of got used to, and it's going to take a while for for any of those things to change. Um, so, if you ask me, when will you know the UK government start accepting streaming taxes? I have no idea. Like they are pretty slow at adopting new tech. When will the crypto world adopt this? And when will the world have to adapt to the crypto world adopting this? I think much sooner, probably in a couple of years. Because in, what you see in crypto is people aren't afraid to do things that are unconventional or crazy or you know, uh, potentially illegal, right? People do what is best. And the best ideas get adopted and the best memes spread. And I personally think that if you're an employee, this is the best way to get paid. So if this takes hold, then institutions will have to adapt. And maybe not all of them will. Uh, maybe some of them you know, will be faster, some of them will be slower. But ultimately, institutions are molded by technology. It's not, it, it's not and it absolutely shouldn't be the other way around. So I would never let an accountant, an accounting problem stop me from uh, building something cool. And I think that's why crypto is still you know, creating new, amazing, cool stuff every day, which is a headache for accountants every day as well. Right? So I'm sorry for that, but uh, we'll keep building. Fran, uh, guys, I think we're out of time. I think there will be lots of opportunities, and there will be lots of other questions, but fascinating stuff. Uh, and as you say, as far as I'm concerned, your job is to continue making life difficult for accountants. Absolutely. So um, yeah. thanks very much, Fran. Brilliant. Thank you.